everyone. I'm gonna do a quick run through of my camp kitchen table. Um, I purchased this from Bass Pro Shops in actually the Gainesville area. Um, I am located in North Florida. I figured I would do um, kind of a layout of how I've set my table up. Um, I think it's a fantastic table for the painters who um, maybe just don't want to invest in the craft and go. Um, I find it extremely expensive. A lot of people say it's an investment, but um, I feel like this was more of an investment for me. It was $155, um, you know, and I went and purchased it at the store. I, I knew exactly what I was getting into. Um, I had read plenty of reviews on people who actually use it for its actual purpose, camping. Um, I had seen a lot of other painters pick one up um, with our body painting group Bear Body Art Refined Exhibition. Um, we have a couple of painters actually that purchased the table solely for body painting because it has such a great work surface um, on the inside. Um, some are laid out very differently. You'll see, um, depending on what brands you get, um, they don't have this uh, side table you see here. There, there isn't one included. Um, or you may have a, a wire, like a metal rack table. Um, we do have one of those. Um, these two holes here on this side, there's one here. Um, and then there's also one, um, forgive my camera work, my husband bought me a gimbal and I'm just attempting to uh, kind of play with that too while I get the chance. Um, so it's really a fantastic table. It's very sturdy. I've now had it for, um, I want to say it's been right at a year. Um, I did originally cover the table um, and paint it. Um, as you can see here, there's like kind of a green line. Um, I did spray paint the lid, um, but just recently switched to contact paper. Um, I picked up at Walmart, um, like two or three dollars per roll. Um, as you can see, the contact paper does scuff very easily. Um, unfortunately, uh, I have only had it on a couple weeks and it's already um, a little damaged. But if you notice, I do have Velcro here. So actually this space is covered up um, about 90% anyway. Um, so it didn't matter too much if this area was damaged. Um, but as you can see, it's quite pretty and glittery in the sun and um, the kids like it. They think it looks really pretty, the younger girls. Um, I do have Velcro all the way around the outside as well. This is something newer I did. Um, I figured to kind of add to it being a little classier, um, I created a tablecloth. Um, the tablecloth does not go on this side because I typically use this little side table here, which I also covered with contact paper. Um, it is chalkboard contact paper. If I feel the need to draw on it, I will at some point, but for right now, I am a command strip, um, clear sign person. So I'll show you some of those I've printed out. Um, but this particular model of camp kitchen table, again, it's the Bass Pro Shop version. Um, there is a Coleman version. Um, there's a couple of other versions that don't have the extra side table. That does add weight. Um, this does probably clock in around 37-ish, 36 pounds, I believe, um, fully loaded. Uh, but that's nice. I feel like it's sturdy with metal frame. Um, this thing is, I've never had it blow over. Um, the lid is quite large, um, but it's got sturdy legs here. I mean, it's not really. And also I love the adjustable knobs on the bottom in case you were on an unlevel surface. Um, that's been a real lifesaver. Um, this little rod here on the corner, um, it's actually a lantern pole. So it does have a kit that will attach and you can hang a light um, up above your kit if need be. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and get it open and I'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside. So I have my two little knobs here. This is how it locks and unlocks. Um, because my kit is a little bit uh, stuffed, <laughs> for lack of a better term, um, I usually have to press down on the lid to make sure these lock in place, which is fine with me. I feel like that makes, I, I know it's tight on there and these aren't gonna swing. Um, I don't, I haven't ever really noticed 
that they've swung open. If they've been bumped slightly, um, that is the only thing keeping the lid closed. So um, you just have to be a little careful, maybe unloading that you're not opening those knobs at all. So as you can see, I've covered it with contact paper on the inside as well. Um, those lock into place, and as you can see, step back here a little bit. Um, I'm one of those really anal painters. <laughs> I just like the, I like everything to look identical um, and really clean and neat. Um, I, I just can't stand uh, when stuff looks a certain way. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I'm, I'm really anal, I'm a Virgo. Um, I like things to look a certain way. So I have a couple of my split cakes here, um, already cakes, um, a neon global palette. I do a couple of the black light parties and that seemed more logical than purchasing one of every color. Um, I have a couple of extra magnets here. Um, and I do use the same magnets as the crafting goes. I purchased those at Michael's. I think it's the neodymium, pardon, I don't know what it's called, but, um, the more expensive kind of like rare earth magnets um, that you can get with the Craft & Go. Um, now these cases are not magnetized, um, these camp kitchen tables. This is like a weird type of material, more like a plastic. Um, some people have said there's, it's like a wood core. I don't think that it's wood. I think it's some sort of like MDF. I'm not 100% sure. So don't take my word for it. Um, but with the Bass Pro Shop version, again, it's a little bit different. Um, this version has this door, um, and that's actually the reason I picked this specific one. I don't know why, but I feel like I have a huge problem with kids putting their hands in my stuff, and I cannot stand that. It feels very germy to me. Um, so usually I lay down in here my apron, so that's always handy. This is my um, brushes, and then this is my table skirt. So it is pretty easy to put on and off. It's a little difficult to do one-handed. Um, but if I can show you here, I have added Velcro. And all we do here is snap that on. Just stick it up all the way around. Seems like a lot of work, but honestly, the results look quite good um, when it's completely covered. This table has kind of two options or two steps. To folding it out. Folds out here and it does have this little hook here snapping it into place on each side and as you can see underneath there are also legs. It comes with legs. I never really need to use them unless I'm at a larger event and I'm gonna be there all day and I worry about kids putting weight on this. Um, I have had a couple of kids lean on it without the legs down and the case is kind of tilted or tipped a little bit, um, but usually I'm standing right there and I can see them. Um, so I don't always put these legs down. This is a paper towel holder, I think for the kitchen, but never used it, never felt the need to. Um, let's see if we can finish getting this table skirt on here. The handle I think is really perfect because um, I end up wrapping around one of my towels and it just is the perfect fit for me to grab onto something to wash my hands, wipe them off real quick. Um, and I've had, again, I've had the case for a year. I really have enjoyed using it. Um, I didn't feel like I was in the right place financially to spend 500 on um, the Craft & Go. Um, trust me, it had been sitting in my cart for quite some time and I never felt like it was the right time to purchase. So there you go, that's with the skirt on. The skirt actually, I mean, the material itself, I bought a tablecloth, I doubled it over um, from Old Time Pottery. Um, they're like a Garden Ridge style store. Um, there's only a couple here in Florida. Um, it was a black restaurant tablecloth and it's actual like cloth material, folded it over, used um, actually just a fabric grade adhesive um, for the Velcro on one side and then the industrial Velcro that just sticks to normal items on the other side. So 
two different styles of Velcro. They work completely fine with one another. I've had no problems. Um, and it's great because, the, again, with the difference in this camp kitchen table, um, underneath, there is kind of these little uh, racks on each side. Now, there's actually a rack that comes with the camp kitchen table um, that will sit down on there all the way across and it's like a nice metal shelf, um, like a grid, a metal grid shelf. Um, and it works fantastic for, again, those long festivals. You're there all day, you wanna put your cooler, water bottle, purse underneath, it's hidden, no one can see it. Um, you know, it's, it's just an all around, um, I mean, what would the term be? Um, it just, it just works so well for me, I think. And this is gonna be a great product for a lot of those ladies that I don't think do an event every week. You know, they may do one event on a weekend um, or they enjoy more festival painting. Because this is a kit, I think it's just, it's just a real brawny kit. I don't know why I'd use that term, but you can set it up and close the lid and it's, it's gonna be okay in the weather. Um, it's going to be okay. I've done a couple festivals where I've left it out overnight, um, and it just worked great. I came back in the morning, and it was it was sealed. There was nothing wrong with it. I mean, just just fantastic for me, really. Um, and one hundred and fifty dollars. I couldn't really say no to that. So here's the door coming out. It will lock into place here, um, and it, it it really when I'm painting, which is me standing. Um, in this direction. Um, that way I don't have to kind of look around to make sure no one's got their little hands in my stuff. Um, I keep my water and a lot of the used sponges in the sink um, because it's set down in there, similar to the Craft & Go and other camp kitchen tables. I don't have to worry about the wind kind of blowing everything and taking it off. Another perk to having the door, um, it really blocks those gusts that you get that maybe come right across your kit and everything blows off the front or blows off the back. Um, so that's been really handy. Um, let's see. So I use these types of signs. Let's see, I have a guidelines. If you wanna pause, take a look at you know my guidelines. Um, I, again, I'm super uh, anal when it comes to a lot of my stuff. So. This same kind of paint splatter and lettering I use on my own t-shirts um, that I wear that say face painter, blah, blah, blah. Here's my contact information. Um, and I use command strips for these. So on the back, you'll see these command strips. I feel like it just looks clean. It looks neat. Um, they go right here. They click into place. And hey, if I want to change anything, it's removable. So I don't have to worry about I've damaged the case by putting some sticky adhesive on there and now it'll never come off. And it just pops in on each side. And then I as well have the, um, I no longer really carry business cards. Um, I leave these signs out at my event with my information. I have a t-shirt on with the information. Um, so I really recommend people take the picture because I think taking a picture of it, it's gonna last in their phone. I feel like, Business cards get washed in the laundry, they get, they go missing in the car seats, and I just don't think that it's feasible anymore these days to really hand out paper cards. So that's typically what the front of my case um, will look like as far as signage. Um, the next product I purchased was, um, I usually have one sign. I will do signs like these um, where I am doing uh, I'm either painting it on or coloring it on with coloring pencils just so I can throw some designs up. I don't have to have the exact picture of what I want to do. Um, I can doodle it in and kids will know um, still exactly what it looks like. It's cute. It's fun. Um, or I do lists, word lists. I don't really like doing pictures. Um, I don't do the same design twice. I can't really copy stuff very well, um, my own stuff. So I tend to just do a list of my most popular stuff. And this is what I found over about 10 years to be the most popular. If there's something a kid wants that's on there, no problem. I don't have a, I don't have a problem in the world, um, you know, adding something to this list or giving somebody something a little custom design. Um, um, I haven't had the time to add 
uh, the command strips to this one. So I just have a little tiny roll of duct tape. And usually if the kids are waiting in line, it's right there, it's right in their face. They have to pick something before they get up. Um, moving on. So typically the way I set this up, um, I got my brush case here, fold it up. And I do have, um, I'm kind of anal, I like my brushes looking a certain way. Um, I've got some of the yellow little Cornell, um, actually really not even anymore. Um, some of the paint pals, uh, they're okay. I have some of the Jolt brushes from Just Paint. Um, the flat Paradise um, for my Artie Cakes. And then um, my most popular brush I probably use for everything is the La Cornelia, the 7000 series. Um, little Cornells that I really, um, it's actually kind of funny. I've had these for a couple of years. As you can see, some of the uh, stuff is chipped off, but I keep coming back to them. I've purchased some of the paint pals. They're, they're okay. I, I actually, even though they're newer and I kind of wanted them, um, I find myself always going back to my originals. It just seems, um, I just like them so much. And actually I've had these since I started painting. Um, Royal Majestic brushes with acrylic handles, which I, the, the, um, the rounds weren't very good. Um, I use these occasionally, but I still have some of these flat brushes here that have just been great. And I actually cut these brushes in half, um, sanded them down. And so now I've just got something quick I can grab and, you know, do some little designs with. Um, of course, this is a level on one end and then a screwdriver flathead and a Phillips, just in case. Um, and then a palette knife, just in case I need to do some modifications or I've got a ton of time on my hands, which tends to happen quite a bit. Um, I'm at an event and there's no kids, so I might as well make sure um, my kit is always looking good when they get there. Um, I purchased these acrylic mirrors at Ikea um, they were like $2.99, $3.99 a piece. Um, now, what do I do with these is I have added just a small strip of uh, Velcro on each one. Um, and as you can see on the glittery strip on the front of the case is where I like to put these. Um, I am one to not want to have to show the kids in the mirror. So I would rather just... Um, have them get down and, um, and as you can see, there's a little strip there. It's very well hidden on the glittery paper. Um, and it is the exact length of these camp kitchen tables, which I just thought was kind of amazing. It's right there at the top and right there at the bottom, no overhang. And look, I, again, a lot of that glitter is covered up, which I think is, Perfect, that's actually kind of what I was going for. I wanted to kind of frame my case a little bit and we have two because of course there's always gonna be kids that come running back over that wanna see their faces um, even well after you've finished. And it's better to have more, you know. So this is typically what the um, front of my case looks like once it's all done. I think it's, um, just the right amount of information. Um, hopefully people look at my guidelines. I know they don't always do it because um, I usually list that I can't paint kids under two. Um, that's just my own policy. Um, if they're good or if I'm at a private party, but normally out in public, um, I just would rather not, unless they're being good. And, I, and there's times I don't have to ask, but if they're having kind of a meltdown in line and freaking out and it's like, oh, well, I'm sorry, I, I can't paint under two. Um, I may be able to do a hand so they can look at it, a little flower or even a stencil, you know, like a stamp. But um, otherwise, no, I don't, I don't really want to paint your screaming kid um, with the runny nose. So um, some of my guidelines on there will go, you know, you have to have a clean face. Um, sometimes I will give wipes away or sometimes I'll have a station of paper towels and just spray water um, out. Um, I won't scare, I, I won't paint scared or upset kids. 
Um, that's just, I, if they're in my, if they're freaking out and that parent is just dead set on making them get painted, I will tell a parent no, because I am not going to traumatize this child. Um, if they're sick or coughing, if their nose is running, we usually talk to them first and make sure their faces are clean. And, um, and then I also added this, which parents really kind of, I love telling, you know, they, the parents love telling their kids, you know, if you're being bad, we're going to have to go to the back of the line. And they usually straighten right up and they're, um, a little bit better acting by the time they get to the chair. Um, I don't have my chair right here at the moment. Um, normally I set it up right here. So my back is facing this way and I'm facing the child that way. Um, and then usually I like to have the line going straight this way or coming around um, the case. So let me get a couple more things out here. Um, and again, I mentioned this earlier, these cases are not magnetized. So I may have magnets on here, but if you can see just slightly, there's the outline of something behind the contact paper, um, obviously, because it's kind of bubbling here a little bit. Um, I simply purchased from Goodwill or Walmart, I have several, um, dry erase boards that are magnetic. Um, removed the back, which is just usually cardboard, um, and they're just glued onto that cardboard, removed it, and contact cemented it to the back of this case. Um, I did at one time have uh, the entire thing in duct tape lined and it's still glued on. It had, um, it was painted teal and there's glitter on it. It was, it was kind of cute, but a, a mess to clean. Um, I really wanted something much smoother like this that I can just wipe clean with a wipe, um, just like the table surface. Um, no staining, it just wipe it and you're, and you're done and it looks, Fine. Um, I did have a, uh, a a global white in the split cake that just will not stand, so it keeps falling out when my case is shut. Um, I even had a lid on it one time, but this just doesn't really seem to work, so I need to kind of squish that all back in. Um, so usually I have towels, you know, like here. See, I can use a lot of my stuff here. Um, this is the towel that I'll usually put here for my hands. Just like this and dry my hands on it when I need to um, as you can see I feel like I have really um, have it down to a science how well I've put everything in this case everything that I need <coughs> um, these metal racks come out and again I have to kind of reiterate because um, as you can see some people's camp kitchen tables this sink is on this side over here um, in front of this rack or it's all on the opposite side and there's no door um, again this model is the um, Bass Pro Shops there usually is an emblem right here in the corner but with a little bit of rubbing alcohol I took that off because I thought that looked silly uh, most people don't even know what's a camp kitchen table until I say something like oh it's for camping and they're oh my god I never would have thought you're such a genius so sometimes I act like I take credit for that but you know, oh, I was the first one to come up with that. But then I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. A couple other people thought of it first. Um, usually I have baby wipes in here. I thought it was cute, fun, and colorful. Now there are hooks up here. Um, there's this kind of silver bar. Um, I keep an extra mirror. That's magnetic. Um, these all slide down. So I hang stencils. Um, let's see, I'll do my wipes here typically. But since it's empty, I'm just going to cover that up. Um, I usually open my bag of sponges and I hang that right up here. And when I'm done um, with them after a weekend um, or after an evening, um, I just throw it in the washer. And that's the easiest thing to do. Um, so look, I hardly have any paint. Uh, I'm, I'm not a painter that needs um, every single color and neon and metallics and pearls. Um, I have a couple, a handful of each. Um, I have a couple of glitter gels here. Again, this kind of stuff is awesome when it's when it just has these hooks and it just hangs right on here and I can kind of set it and forget it. It's out here, it looks cool, even if I don't use it. Um, kids are still like, what's that? That looks awesome. I love that. So, I have gems. I'm out of glue. Um, they were organized. They're not any longer because 
the case came open. Um, this is a uh, jewelry tray for beads that I purchased from Walmart. Um, I have two. I have one, um, this one. The other one I thought maybe eventually if I would like to add additional colors in pearls or what have you, um, I have another case to do that. I tried to get my colors. I really prefer my colors to be right next to each other, but uh, it's not going to happen. So this is all the paint I need for an event. And if I need, uh, I have I have cakes for body painting. And again, like I said, some painters use this because it's just the perfect size, really. Um, I know someone, um, Whitney Myers uses the <coughs> the pads um, for your feet. You can get them at Harbor Freight. I think that's where she got hers. Um, it's like the giant puzzle piece um, stress pads. You put them under something, you stand on them. Um, or kids play mats, you know, it's like got letters in them. Um, she come out in circles and put all her cakes in those to kind of hold them tight while she's uh, body painting. So, smart idea. I don't have that much though, so. Um, I just stand my water up like this. I've got my collapsible. So everything I got for this case was really meant to be um, the best and smallest and easiest way to put stuff in. Um, I do keep a little grate in there, help the water, help get the paint out of the brushes. Um, occasionally I do put a little brush bath in my stuff. Uh, um, I got my spray bottle, got my hand sanitizer, got stencils everywhere. Got, um, so I don't know why it's so hard to find a trash can sometimes at events. Uh, after, like, a birthday party, I'm not about to run through these people's house looking for their garbage. I'll just stuff it in my case and walk away. Um, so I, I use stencils, um, maybe half the time, like every other face. Um, my sten a lot of my stencils, I've kind of done collections. So I've got my most popular girly ones. And with these hooks, everything just hangs. So I have a couple of stuff I'll leave out. Um, if I don't put the glitter gel up there, I put all of the stencils. I've got boy ones, I've got patterns, I've got Easter eggs, I've got um, a lot of the superhero logos. I have a local college. Um, I do their events uh, for their alumni. So I've got custom stencils of all those. Um, keep money out for tips just in case everyone can kind of take a peek. It's a little harder because you can't really see it. So usually the parents on this side with the kid, um, it works out. They see it. I get it afterwards. Um, but yeah, this is my, this is my setup typically for an event. Um, I really, again, enjoy using this table. I think for $150, it fits everything I need. Um, and possibly more. If I did not have this door here, I would have the entire thing covered in probably more split cakes, but I don't need that much. I, um, I do the same um, styles of butterflies and the same um, snakes and dragons, and I, I use what I have. Um, I'm, I don't feel like I need nine million paints. Um, you know, I feel like everybody really thinks the case just looks phenomenal. And, and I'm happy with that. So if I have a client tell me, you know, this looks so professional, this looks really good, um, then I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Um, but it's a fantastic kit. I probably am ready to go in about five minutes. I know it's not three or something compared to uh, the craft and go, but the legs are included. Um, it's, it's heavy. I admit uh, it is only about two pounds, three pounds heavier than... Um, the people I know, their crafting goes. Um, so in terms of weight, you're not really, you're not really losing much. I mean, it, it's so similar. Um, it's a little bulkier. I mean, a little more odd shaped. Um, so I do have a wagon. I have a $40 wagon. I purchased the wagon before I purchased the case. Um, I had a smaller, um, like toolkit case, um, from Harbor Freight. I think it was a, um, 21 by 14 or, uh, you know, 20 by 17, you know, kind of black case. And then I had a folding table, I had the chair, so it's kind of narrowed down. I only have the kit and the chair and I put it in the um, 
wagon and I wheel it around. So that's really just the best, um, you know, way I've found to, to use the kit. Um, and I am a four or five event painter a day this coming weekend. I've got one Friday night. I've got three on Saturday back to back. And, um, the following week I'll have two or three back to back. So, I mean, I can pack this up, throw it in the wagon, wheel it out, and it sits right in the back of my car. Uh, um, I drive a Toyota Highlander or a Pontiac Vibe, depending on, you know, how far I'm going. Um, so in terms of back seat sizing, it's a little large. It will just sit right across the back seat. Um, you know, and I, so no matter what I'm driving, I seem to find room to put it in the car with, with the chair. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, um, feel free to, um, comment below. Um, if you want more tips or how I did this or that, um, you know, feel free to ask, comment, um, and let me know. And I hope this video kind of makes it out there to some of the, um, ladies and gentlemen that, uh, you know, we're kind of thinking about getting a camp kitchen table, haven't really decided, um, you know, it's, it's such a fantastic piece of equipment. I, I'm really happy with it. And after a year, it's going pretty strong. It's pretty sturdy. Um, haven't had any real major issues. So again, thank you for watching guys. Y'all have a uh, wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.